How's it going, guys? So, here's my sobriety story. So, growing up as a kid, uh, I grew up in Illinois, um, on the outskirts of Chicago, like 15, 20 to 30 minutes away, depending on traffic. <laughs> but, um, the... It, it was nice growing up. I, I came from a nice house. Uh, it's not like we ever really struggled. My, my mom had uh, alcoholism in her family, um, so... I think I, I was predisposed regardless, but, uh, so, anyways, let's get started. So, when I was 18, just like everybody before then, you, you end up drinking or smoking weed, doing your little experimentation shit, um, so, when I ended up, uh, turning like 18, 19, um, I started gradually taking Vicodin. Wouldn't be an everyday thing, I would take like two of them maybe twice a month, something like that, and it was just because I'd never done it, a lot of people were doing it, and, uh, I liked the feeling, and gradually I started taking more, um, you know, started not having enough for how many I wanted to take, whether that be throughout the week, throughout that one single day, so it's, <clears throat> I don't know, it could be... I'm going to place my phone in a better spot if I can. So essentially, um, I ended up asking my buddy one day who uh, I would be getting them from. And uh, I was like, hey man, you know, I, uh, I'm looking to get, you know, this or that. He's like, hey, I can't get any of those. So he said, I can get you Oxycontins. And I said, I don't know about that, man. That sounds a little bit intense. So he's like, nah, man, it's fine. Don't worry about it. You know, you'll have your Vicodin back or your Percocets back in no time. So I'm like, okay, great. So I take one, and I feel super sick. But, like, after the sick, I was like, this is even better than Vicodin, you know? So from there, I got addicted to Oxycontin. And I've never been like, hooked on anything so bad, like, when I would be taking pills, um, you know, when I was a little bit younger, I would take Xanax every now and then, but I grew up with, like, anxiety, so I had, like, a prescription, but then I ended up taking more than prescribed, like most people do, <laughs> so, uh, it's, addiction is, is, it's crazy and scary, but some people, if you can prosper through that, it's one of the greatest things that you, it's, it's, it's a teacher is what I think it is. So, <clears throat> like, after the, the first time that I took Oxycontin, it was, it was over with, man. Like, I had only tried heroin after that, like, maybe a handful of times. And it, I'd never shoot up just because it's the one thing that makes you, an, you know, a junkie, so to speak. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I tried to shy away from doing that, and uh, it... I think that it, uh, I don't know, I mean, at the end of the day, I still kept using, and what happened was, where I was seeing before, I couldn't afford, so I had to move back in with my parents, and my, my older brother, Ryan, he lives in Chicago, and, uh, sorry, and he, uh, he had a lot of stuff that was being stored at my parents' house in, uh, in, you know, on the outskirts of Chicago, so... I knew that he had stuff there, and the job that I was working at the time wasn't enough to afford my addiction, so I ended up stealing from my parents, my brother, anybody that I could at that time in my life. If I loved you, I didn't love you enough, you know, and looking at myself today, it's crazy that I still have relationships with these people, not all of them, um, I don't talk to my mom because I have uh, my own family, and she is still pretty wrapped up in addiction, so to speak, so I I don't want to be told that I need to change, and this and that, you know, because it's, you're, you were my mom at some point, I mean, I guess you're always my mom, but like, if you're not helping, then I don't want to hear it, you know, everybody's got an opinion, but if you have an opinion, and you're telling me it, I'd assume we're friends, we're close, you know, 
So, with addiction comes relapse. So, I ended up slowing down. My buddy Kevin, my best friend growing up, basically said, Hey man, you need to tighten your shit up because I see you, I see you slacking. You're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're fucking up. You're fucking up. You know? So, he got me a job. And I basically cleaned up after that. And, uh, after... I mean, after, like, a few times of relapse, you either know if you're gonna keep going and doing this thing, or if you're gonna eventually, uh, I don't know, but, <sighs> give me one second, I gotta find a lighter. <coughs> so, uh, where was I? So, I ended up meeting a girl, and, you know, during this time I was talking to a few women, I'd lost weight because I'd, you know, basically been on and off drugs for years. I turned to just, you know, smoking weed and drinking. My buddy Kevin got me a job. He moved me into his place with his girl, and uh, they basically made sure that I had a, a roof over my head and that I had a support system while I was going through this time. Since my family, all, like, they, their, their way of helping when I was a kid was just, like, sending me to rehab. They didn't, like, give a fuck what was causing anything or, you know, they didn't, know if I had any childhood trauma, because no parent with kids thinks that their kid has childhood trauma. Why would they? You know, I'm your parent. There's no way that I caused you any trauma, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I mean, it, it tends to happen. Some kids are traumatized by simple things. Some kids, it takes a lot. But the, the thing is, is that, so I, I met this girl, and we, we got pregnant. So we were together for like six months. She gets pregnant, and I'm in love with this girl. I really am. So we go and we move to... Uh, we were living in Roselle at my friend's place. I was renting a room from her. And we moved to Wisconsin because I wasn't going to try and raise a family and then fail because of the people that I was surrounding myself with or that just who I was near anyways, you know? So what we ended up doing was we moved to Wisconsin and we ended up, uh, she got a job, she didn't have to, um, but I ended up getting a job at a distribution center, uh, like moving a bunch of, uh, so I worked at Roundy's basically in Oconomowoc in, in Wisconsin and that's the place that just recently got shot up by uh, some pissed off worker and uh, so... I moved out there, and, man, I was thinking, yeah, I got, a, I got a fresh start, you know, I got a family that's coming, I got support, you know, I have a good job, I should be okay, and uh, not the case at all, actually, it was fine for a while, but it was only a matter of time until, you know, addiction caught me again, or I let it catch me, so to speak. So, we ended up... Um, living together for about a year altogether, I think. We had my son, Arthur, Arthur Anthony Maslowski, and he was such a cute kid. Still is. Handsome little man. And, uh, you'd think that that would have been enough to, you know, make me buck up and realize, like, hey, whatever bullshit I'm doing, I've got to switch into dad mode, you know? But, like, growing up, I watched my dad work all the time, Whenever he was home, he'd make sure that, you know, he helped us with our homework. Uh, I couldn't ask for a better father. I, I couldn't. And I always looked up to him because he had amazing work ethic. Uh, you know, he he was, ev he, you know, he was, a, he was everybody's, you know, hero in the aspect where when you see your dad, anybody, any kid when they see their dad, they're just like, that's my hero, you know, that's how I was. And I still am like that. Um... He was a Marine, he, you know, had four kids, he made sure that he, I mean, he retired not too long ago, and he's like 63, 64, so he worked his whole life to make sure that he, you know, the family that he had would never have to be hungry or anything like that, and I salute him because not everybody can, you know, make it happen like that, so, uh... 
essentially what happened was is that we moved out here and at Roundies I ended up meeting some people and you know old habits die hard literally so I ended up getting I, I, and it wasn't anything like that I went back to my old addiction you know because I've always been in love with downers that's why I I mean I still smoke from time to time but like that's because I'm stressed <laughs> it's not like an addiction or anything I mean I'll have a beer from time to time but that's for occasions I don't come home and, and drink you know it's it's not something that I like to do I don't even like the feeling anymore I don't know how I did it for so long <coughs> but um, so we ended up having our son and uh, I was working around he's still and I was getting on ecstasy taking that at work because we had to pick timed orders at roundies if you if you had an order that took an hour and you picked it and you know, one hour and two minutes, shit, you're in trouble, you know, and that's how it worked there, and I didn't like that, because I just moved, you know, three hours away from where I had family, essentially, to have a job where it's like, well, you're going to fail at some point, and uh, it's a revolving door there, it really is, the people that I met that are still at Roundy's, Fucking salute you. Those are the real soldiers, dude. Those are the real MVPs. The mother, the people that are still at Roundy's Distribution Center in Oconomowoc, you guys are the real fucking MVPs. And you know who I'm talking about. I got my boy Twan out there. I don't know if uh, Nate, I know Nate is still picking. Shit, man, there's a lot of people that are still doing that job. And it's hard fucking work. And that's why I ended up cracking, you know. And so I started doing uppers. And when you're doing uppers, working third shift with a son, and your, you know, wife-to-be works too. Uh, so I'd get off at like 2 in the morning sometimes, and then I eventually got shit-canned. So we were hurting for a little bit, but we managed. So I ended up getting another job at Roundy's. But that wasn't until a little bit later on, so, um, and that was a whole different story. I ended up getting fired for a fight that we, I got into with some capstone logistics contractor guy, so, um, we ended up, you know, she went back to work, I, um, was looking for work, but ultimately I was watching Arthur, and I, uh, wasn't working, so, I wasn't happy with myself, didn't feel like a man, because there's nothing worse than having a child and then not being able to provide for that child. That's a horrible feeling, you know. And that, that it, fe it affected me a lot. So I started drinking, um, and drinking a lot every day, all day if I could. If I had to watch my son, I'd still drink. And there was times where she came in and the apartment was filled with smoke because I left a fucking frozen pizza in the oven. Like, I wasn't doing what I should have been doing as a father or as a human being at that point. Um, I wasn't ready to take care of another human life. So, eventually what ended up happening is we, we split. And she left me and uh, said that she wouldn't keep my son from me, this and that, blah, blah, blah. I haven't seen my son since he was six months old. And, you know, I pay child support. I write him letters every day, but they're in a notebook, and he will get them when he's 18, because his mother thinks that it's okay to keep him from me, and that's fine, that's fine. If you want to demand stuff from me, but I don't get to see my kid, that's not how it works, and if you think it is, you're sadly mistaken. Just because you got everything you wanted in life, in every relationship, when you broke up with every boyfriend, and yeah, this chick turned out to be crazy. <laughs> so, not the kind of crazy where, like, you know, she's shitting on the walls, you know, and, like, screaming a la Akbar or anything like that, but, like, she started just, like, really getting into her phone a lot more, and, like, our son turned into, like, a Louis Vuitton bag, meaning he was the, the pun of a lot of pictures, and I really didn't have a say-so to begin with and what happened with my family or my son. Um, so she moves back to Illinois. I get subpoenaed, and I have to pay child support, obviously, because I, I helped birth a, you know, a child. 
and I'm not one to run from responsibility. So I ended up having to go to court. I ended up getting arrested. I had two warrants for my arrest because she had two different statements in two different states, and she lawyered up and then became a woman's advocate, and she played the system like a fucking... <laughs> Like a gangster, basically. And here I am thinking that I was a hardcore person, but... Uh, so I ended up um, being single for a while. And uh, I it's not like my my drinking got better after my, my wife-to-be and son left. So I ended up getting really, really bad. And I would... I would sit in my uh, apartment drinking a 30 case of beer and doing, you know, cocaine. And I did that for months. And it was the most depressing time of my life. I would wake up drunk. I would go to sleep drunk. Um, and I thought that was cool because, you know, I live in Wisconsin where cheese and beer, you know, woohoo! But I, uh, I fell into a habit again and just started boo, going down. So I ended up having to, I had to talk to somebody because I couldn't fix myself. And I tend to think of myself as a very strong-minded individual. And, uh, <coughs> you know, when it comes to, you know, losing family members or just not feeling like you did enough, it's, it's hard, you know? So, fast forward, I still am using, blah, 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 but I'm, I'm in a relationship now, so that makes it even better. And the person I'm in a relationship with is a recovering opiate user, so um, when I met her, I was like, okay, this is nothing crazy. I didn't know about her past. We had just talked, you know, she sent me some snapchats of her boobs, you know, so it was just kind of like, all right. Um, but we, we got along. We had a very similar, uh, personalities. Um, she made me laugh, which is like one of the biggest things that I look for. If you're not funny, get out of here, honey, you know? So we, uh, we dated for like a year and then, um, I, started realizing that she was cheating on me, and I would catch her, like, talking to other people on her phone, and she'd justify it in many ways. Um, so, once I got out of that relationship, like, that's when I really started seeing, like, what my, what my patterns had been in the past years, because I've only been in Wisconsin for, like, f five years, something like that, maybe a little more, maybe, yeah, maybe it's, like, five or six years now, I'm not sure, but, um, I ended up breaking up with that girl, and the person that I met, who I'm with now, is the love of my life. She is the mother of my daughter, my daughter Nova, and uh, looking at relationships when I was a little bit younger, like when I was in my prime, so to speak, and looking at relationships now, it's, it's night and day. Like, it is, <clears throat> it doesn't take much for me to, like, cut somebody off these days, so, uh, it's, it's crazy, but, I mean, I'm clean today, I mean, I, it took me going to a suboxone clinic and stuff like that, but, I mean, it's, it's a lot easier living my life these days with the support that I have, um, and the family that I have, and, uh, I would recommend getting sober if you're not, because the sooner the better. The later you wait, the more your body is going <laughs> to be affected by it, trust me. I'm not old by any means. I turned 30 in July, so, like, it's not like I'm an old geezer or anything, but I, I do feel, you know, what addiction has done to my body, my lungs, my voice, you know, so um, I'm here for anybody that has questions comments, concerns, uh, if you want advice, if you have questions, I mean, like I said, feel free to ask me, um, I, I have no problem, you know, comments, doesn't matter, uh, if you guys really want more content, I will, I will give you some, so, thank you guys for listening, I appreciate it, bye.